All right, what is up, my friends? Welcome, Bloomboro Complete Set Review. That's right. Very excited for this set. Uh, great flavor. Nice kind of return to simplicity for Magic, which is really, really cool. We'll be going over every card in the set for Constructed and for Limited Play. All right, we did wide already. It's on YouTube. Go watch it. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Hit the buttons and do the things, all right? And uh, we also, we're, doing, we're doing blue now. Going over it all, giving out our awards, our Best in Show Award, and more. And that's just freaking great. I'm excited. You should be, too. Real fast before we start, I'll remind you all, 10 new brews will be next Wednesday, the 24th. Uh, the logos there are backwards. We don't have any friends. <laughs> Nobody likes you. Live on Twitch, then on YouTube. So a little bit of a whoopsie there, no problem. Whoops, whoopsie. It'll be a lot of fun, though. That's, uh, we got Bronze Mythic happening as well on Tuesday on release day. I'll be drafting the set and uh, just learning the whole format with you, my friend. All right, so that is great. So... We'll get right to the cards. Real fast, I want to remind you all that we're brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. CoolStuff Inc. is proud to sponsor Jim Davis. We offer great deals on card games, tabletop RPGs, board games, and more. Get a free token featuring Jim Davis and take 5% off your next order if you use the code JIM5 at checkout. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. All right, let's get right to it with Azor Beast Binder. This is a mean little rat. Tanner for a 1-3 Vigilance Rat Rogue. Now, rats are like the, the blue-black creature type. So every color pair of a set has a creature type associated with them. Blue-black gets the rats. And this is a 1-3 Vigilance, just your average blue Vigilance creature. Can't be blocked by creatures of power 2 or greater. Isn't that, isn't that Skulk, right, or something? Uh, whenever it attacks up to one target artifact... Creature or planeswalker and opponent controls loses all abilities till your next turn. If it's a creature, it becomes a 2 2. So, kind of an interesting card, right? So, this is kind of like a creature that can come in. It's kind of hard to block it. Uh, and then, of course, if you make the creature into a 2 2, it can't block it anyway, which is kind of cool. And then you can just turn off their planeswalker, turn their shoulder into a 2 2 with no abilities. Kind of cool. The problem is, it's, it's just a tiny little freaking 1 3. So, like, while this can potentially, like, remove a creature or planeswalker, doesn't really attack for a lot or do much else. So, like, I, you know, I, I don't know. It seems a little, uh, you know, not super exciting as far as if you wanted to get rid of their Shieldred or their planeswalker, just freaking kill it. Just get it out of here. Get off you know? Plane. So, I don't know. Kind of a weird card. This is like a cool limited card. But Constructed, I just don't know what would ever make you want to put this card into your deck. It's really, really all there is to it. So, cool limited card for sure, because the rate's certainly fine. Uh, but yeah, Constructed, I just don't know where you're going to put this card. Bellowing Crier, a.k.a. my son Cassian. <laughs> nah, he's good. So, that for a 2-1 Frog Advisor, so the blue-green creature type is Frogs, and perhaps the coolest one as well. This is just a, a common 2-1 EDB draw discard. That's obviously just an okay limited common, right? Nothing crazy here. Uh, but a lot of the frog mechanic is based around bouncing your own creatures and replaying them for value. So a little more value here than usual. Very, very important when you're evaluating new cards is you're not just evaluating the card in the context of like, this is a magic card. You're evaluating it in the context of this card will be seeing play alongside other Bloomborough cards. How good is it in that environment? I think this card is going to be better than it looks uh, in your average limited game. With that being said, still just a, a limited, limited kind of filler to drop. Calamitous Tide. Cool art. Right? Jeez. I'm here. I'm here for you. Four mana for a sorcery. Return up a two-tower creatures to their owner's hands and then draw two cards and discard a card. Uh, just a really good limited card. Right? You know, uh, bounce two things, draw two cards, probably discard a land. Nice good top end for your curve. If you're aggressive, it could be a lethal attack. If you're defensive, it could buy you some time and draw some cards. Uh, just clunky, but powerful limited card. Nothing crazy here. And again, one of the things I'm really enjoying about this set is the simplicity. Is that a lot of the cards are like this are just kind of simple. They just kind of do a thing. And Magic has a wide enough, uh, you know, design space where is this similar to a card we've seen before? Yes, but is it different? Yes, also. And that's great. Daring Wave Rider is next. Look at that little guy. Just Hanging out there, getting those Chaos Emeralds, something like that. We got a, a six mana 4-4 four, four Otter Wizard. 
Whenever it ETBs, you may cast an instant or a sorcery card with mana value four or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost and then exile it. So this is just a big fat otter snapcaster mage. Uh, this is going to be a phenomenal limited card. Uh, as long as you have enough things to cast with it, if you flash back a card draw spell or a removal spell, that's insane. Uh, obviously, for constructing this card, it's way too expensive. Uh, but for a limited, this card, it's excellent. And again, don't forget, even though this is an otter, there's a lot of frog and frog theme cards that bounce your own stuff and possibly do it again. So, uh, great limited card. Pretty sweet. Uh, good stuff. Dazzling Denial. The Burbs. It's a mana counterspell. It's Quench. Countless pay two. If you control a bird, it's countless pay four. So there aren't like actually a ton of birds in the set. You know, one of the things about doing a, a creature type matters set uh, with 10 different types across all the color pairs is there isn't really like a huge critical mass. Um, but that being said, if you are playing birds, this card's obviously excellent. Uh, so Lofty, Lofty Denial was a very, very similar card to this, uh, but it was countless pay one and then four if you had a flyer. This is obviously a lot better. You know, this sort of make disappear card uh, is very powerful. Uh, you know, we see it, it sees playing constructed for sure, and then good limited, and then Chaos Bay four for two mana is otherworldly good. Uh, so this is definitely a card with uh, potential constructed, and then a good limited card, as long as there are enough birds. That is the huge caveat. I haven't counted every bird in the set, you know, or whatever. We're going back. Let's see what cards are birds in uh, in older sets. Uh, but this card has potential. We'll see if it meets it with the birds. Dire Downdraft. Again, art in this set is so good. Four mana for an instant. Costs one less to cast if it targets an attacking or tapping creature. This is your usual, you know, blue pseudo removal spell unlimited. Uh, get sort of a thing. They can keep if they want to. A little cheaper if they have a, if they have a attacker. Uh, so better defensively than offensively. Uh, but still, just like a limited removal spell. Nothing really too, too crazy here. I've seen it before a million times. Downpour Mage. We got a sleeper, folks. So this, again, this frog mechanic is very weird. All right, so the frogs in the set all care about bouncing your stuff for value uh, and then ETBs and stuff and reusing effects and so on and so forth. This is a two mana, one, three frog wizard. Because whenever one or more creatures you control leave the battlefield without dying, draw a card. So now, a few things about that. Obviously, bouncing your own things, as the activated ability does, is one way to do this. Uh, however, this also counts uh, exiles. This counts effects like the last card, where you put it out of the battlefield in some way, but not kill it. Uh, so, this actually does a lot more uh, than just the, it implies with the, uh, the bounce your own creature ability. Uh, you can blink your creature and draw a card. I think this card's a big sleeper. Uh, I think this card is a lot more than it looks. And uh, it's not too hard to draw, you know, a few cards off this thing over the course of a few turns. And then it has this sort of, like, failsafe of, like, if you can't find your other way to do this or your clever way to do this, uh, just use it and mount it itself, which is kind of cool. They get Sunfall, you draw a card off this, which is kind of cool. So, I think this card's super sweet. Uh, it's a weird card. It's a finicky card. But I think this card has serious potential and constructed. And then a limited this card is excellent, honestly. Just, you know, 1-3, engine, couldn't ask for more. Uh, so, pretty cool. Down, port mage, good stuff. Sleeper card for Blue. Eddie Crab is next. This is a 7 mana 5-5 five, five flash. It costs 1 less for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. Enters tapped if it's not your turn. And when it enters, tap two things. So, a lot of things going on here, right? So, very similar to, to, to Tolarian Terror, uh, which is also legal and standard right now. Uh, and so, you could do, like, you know, a, a double thing on that. Has this text, which is pretty common on large flash creatures in blue, of it comes in tapped and it's not your turn, so you can't ambush block. But it can tap things, so it can be a defensive measure. You know, the problem with, uh, you know, there was like a 4-4 flash for four in Outlaws uh, that came in tapped, and like, it couldn't block that first turn. The turn you played it felt awful. The turn you play this thing feels great. You play it, tap two other attackers, on tap of a 5-5. Five, five. Awesome. So this is obviously a card that requires work, that requires enabling. Uh, but this is definitely going to be a very, very solid limited card. And then it constructed, uh, now that you're pairing us up with, with Telerian Terror and Cantrips, things like that, this could do some cool stuff there too. And having Flash is cool as well. So you leave a Counterspell and still play this thing. I think this card's got some serious legs. Or claws, I guess. Uh, so keep an eye out for this one for Constructed and Limited. 
Uh, also a good budget card, like your mono blue deck stuff too. So card super sweet. Big fan. Eddie Merck Crab. Cool stuff. Eluge, the Shoreless Sea. Not every card's going to be simple, all right? Uh, blue, 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 one, Mythic. Elemental Fish. Power Dumbness equal to the number of islands you control. Whenever it ETBs or attacks, put a Flood Counter on target land. It's an island in addition to its other types for as long as it has a Flood Counter on it. And then it says the first incident sorcery spell you cast each turn costs blue or one less, which is a very, very weird templating. I don't know why the or one is in parentheses because that's not implied. If a, if a, if a card says this costs one blue less, it costs one blue less, not one generic. So usually italicized text in parentheses is reminder text, not rules text. So this one, I don't get. Uh, from a rule standpoint, this makes no sense to me, but whatever. Uh, from a real world, real world something makes sense. Uh, so uh, your first answer spell costs less to cast for each land you control they flood counter on it. So, very, very weird card. All right. Um, it wants you to play all islands, but it also wants you to put flood counters on your islands to make them more islandy, I guess. And then cast things for cheaper, which is also interesting. You know, I, I feel like a lot of this card is mostly just like, this is a, a, a nightmare for your islands kind of thing. But yeah, really, really weird card. Uh, doesn't really seem like the juice is worth the squeeze on this card at all. Uh, if you are playing mono blue and standard, like maybe this card could be decently sized. But even then, it's just like, you know, eventually we can cast things for free, which is kind of cool. But that's a long way away, you know. So um, I guess in theory, uh, if you were to play a, like this card, put a flood counter and play a one mana spell immediately, it's kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's a weird card. Very, very weird card. You got to see it play, play for sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, some, some discussion in chat about the, this, this costing thing here. I don't think that is true. For example, there was a card called Edgewalker. I was like, I also changed the rules on it back in Onslaught. That was a cleric that cost black, white one and said all clerics cost a black, white less. And it did not reduce the generic cost. It was, was kind of a, it was kind of a bad card. So I don't know. Weird card for sure. I'm not even sure how it freaking works. Uh, we're sure what we'll the next card. <laughs> Finch formation. The meta for a Tucci flyer. Has Offspring 3. So again, Offspring is a mechanic that means you get to play a kicker cost and get a copy of a card as a 1-1. Um, it has Flying. It says whenever this creature enters, target creature you control gains Flying at the end of turn. Not a very good card, honestly. This is a real fringe playable limited card. 2G Flyer for 3 is no longer even really playable limited at all. Uh, so Offspring effect is kind of cool, but it's really... 6 mana for a 2-2 two, two, and 1-1 is not very good either. I think this is limited filler. If you're rolling flyers or birds, sure, but not very exciting. Gossip's Talent. 2 mana for a class. The classes are enchantments that have 3 abilities. One is native. The other two you have to pay, pay for. So the native ability is whenever a creature EDB surveil 1, which is not great for 2 mana, honestly. 2 mana more uh, to get to level 2. Whenever you attack a creature... Whenever you attack, attacking creature with power three of us can't be blocked this turn, which is also not really worth four mana in a card. And then chapter three, four mana more will give you a creature that does come damage to a player. You may exile it and then return to the battlefield under its owner's control. This card sucks. Still a piece of uh, nothing here is worth the amount of mana you're paying for it at literally any street. This card seems wildly unplayable to me. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but looks terrible in all ways. Into the Flood Maw. One blue instant. You can gift a tapped fish. Again, there's an optional cost. Kind of like Kicker. Important to note, though, that the gift is part of the resolution of the spell. So you choose that you're going to give a gift when you announce it when you play the spell. But it won't actually do anything until the spell resolves. If the spell were to be countered, for example, they would not get a fish. It's not an additional cost. The, the cost is, the, is the, the promise. And then the actual execution is the text of the card, the gift. This is an unsummon. And if you want to give a fish, you can bounce an outline permanent. This is basically just like an older format bounce spell, where like if you're playing a combo deck and looking for the cheapest one blue boomerang to bounce a hate piece, this is, might be the new best one. Uh, aside from that, it just unsummon. It's okay. It's not very exciting. Is it? It is. Important to note, however, that even though this is a frog themed card, this cannot bounce your own stuff, which is a huge, huge downside for all the ETBs in the frog deck. So, overall, I think this card's kind of bad, but 
fridge player in uh, older formats. Just check real fast. I was actually wrong with the Edgewalker thing. So the, it is a logical thing. Uh, I am wrong. I am dumb. Is what it is. Next card is Kitnap. Formatted for a mind control with gift a card. So a giant creature, you steal it. If you didn't give a gift, you put three stun counters on it. So this is obviously a bonkers limited card, right? Because four mana terminate is like fine. And then you give them a card, you just steal it. Even if you don't give them a card... Terminate, and then I get a creature in three turns is also really good. Most of the time, you're giving a card here. Uh, but this card's pretty powerful. I would say if this card is an outside shot and constructed, uh, there is some value as far as giving your uh, opponent cards, the cards like Fairy Mastermind, where giving them a gift will just come back to you anyway, which is kind of cool. So I would say outside shot and constructed, uh, but definitely a, a, bo a bomb rare and limited for sure. Uh, Kitnap. Aww. Kitsa, Otterball Elite. I'm not gonna lie, folks. Blue seems kind of weak in this set. I struggled to find a bomb and common, a bombin common that I liked, as well as a uh, best in show and stuff. Uh, but we have Kitsa Otterball Leader winning best of show. We get to see what a Mythic Merfolk Looter looks like. Two mana for a one three, Vigilance, Prowess, Tap to Loot. Then it also has Tap two. Tap this. Copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy, but you can only activate this ability if its power is three or greater. So what that basically means is that ability is only on if you cast at least one spell before the spell you want to copy, right? So I play this card. I attack with it. I cast an opt. Prowess is up to two. Then I cast a lightning bolt. I resolve the prowess trigger. And then I can activate and copy the bolt. So you must cast one spell before the spell you want to copy. Uh, and then copying things is quite powerful. Obviously, if you want to live a dream uh, in Phoenix and Pioneer, you copy a treasure guru, something like that. But just copying a, a card draw spell, a burn spell is all reasonable. And the the, the reality here is that the, the stats on this card are ridiculous. Like a 1-3 prowess vigilance for 2 as a baseline that also loots with vigilance is pretty solid. And then you have... Uh, this copy ability, which is not that hard to use, honestly. You can just like copy and go for the throat, you know, whatever. Turn 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 five or something like that. You know, cast an opt, cast a go for the throat, copy it, kill two things. Pretty good too. So uh I'm not convinced in this card. You know, I again, as I said, I I pre I preset this with um, you know, that I don't love the blue cards in this set. So this is not like a, a glowing review of this card or anything like that, but this card is pretty good. Uh, obviously a great limited card also. And um, we'll see. We'll check it out. There's the otter. Best in show. Will it pan out? We'll find out. Nightfisher is next. Uh, oddly better than Kingfisher. <laughs> five mana for a four five flying uncommon. Whenever another bird ETBs make a fish. Uh, just a limited all star. Uh, four five flyer for five is already good and limited. If this thing makes token or two, you're going to be freaking stoked about it too. So. Just overall, great limited card. Not too much more. Simple. Effective. Love it. Light Shell Duo. 4 mana for a 3-4 Rat Otter. This is the, the, the Rat Otter Duo. Has Prowess. I'm going to ETBs Surveil 2. There is some threshold stuff in the set. Not that much, but Surveil helps there. I think this card looks like a like kind of filler level 4 drop. But I think it's a little better than that, honestly. I think this card's actually pretty solid. Uh, fine limited card. Wouldn't really take it super highly or anything like that, but I think it's actually a better limited card than it looks and will make your deck most of the time, especially if you're playing a lot of spells or uh, surveilling for, for Threshold. Long River Lurker. Aww. Just look at that little guy. He's got a sword in his mouth, ready to go cause some trouble. The meta for a 2-3 Frog Scout. Ward 1. All your other frogs have Ward 1. Whenever ETBs, target creature you control can't be blocked this turn. Another creature deals combat damage this turn. You may exile it if you do return to the battlefield under its owner's control. So, again, the frog cards are all about reusing ETBs, bouncing your own stuff, blinking your own stuff. This is a really good way to do that, right? So, you play this thing. The body of this card is reasonable enough. You know, make your thing unblockable, and then you get to blink it and draw a card or whatever else it might be. Uh, card's good. Good limited card for sure. Constructed, no. Uh, but... Um, yeah, overall, good solid card. Good limited card. I think this card will play a lot better than it looks. 
Long River's Pull. It's a trap. Folks, it's a trap. All right. I know you love your counter spells at all. Blue, blue counter target spell sounds really appealing. Giving your opponent a guard, not so appealing. All right. So we got blue, blue. Instant gift a card. Effectively, this is remove soul for blue, blue. Counter target creature spell. And then if you want to gift a card to your opponent, you can counter any spell. The problem with this card is that this is a pure tempo counter spell if you're countering a non-creature spell, which is usually what you want to counter, honestly. Uh, you know, I counter your Sunfall, I have to give you a card. That sucks. Uh, there are many better ways to counter a Sunfall than this. Counter a creature, this is obviously pretty good, but the problem is you're taking this sort of like, okay, I have this modality and flexibility in this card. That costs blue blue. So that removes a lot of the flexibility of the, of the card. Uh, that being said, if you're playing mono blue, this card's fine. You know, or remove soul is almost playable by itself. So like a little bit of upside there too. But I think this card is going to play a lot worse than it looks. Countering your opponent's spell to give them a card is really, really bad. Um, your goal of the counter spell is to trade evenly on resources and then up on mana typically. Counter a four drop and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, card's pretty, uh, pretty mediocre. I've seen some hype around this card. I think it's uh, pretty unfounded. Trap card for this set. Long River's Pull. Mind Spiral. Format of Sorcery. Gift a fish if you'd like to. Target player draws three. If the gift was promised, you get to stun a creature. Um, this card's pretty good. I think that giving your opponent a fish is a pretty low a low cost. Whereas having a, uh, a way to play your card draw spell but also not just like die in the freaking backswing is pretty good too. So tap your 5-5, five, five, draw three cards, you have a fish, but whatever, say go. That being said, being a sorcery is a pretty, pretty tough one for a five mana card draw spell. So overall, if there are some really controlling decks in the format, I think this card could be fine in them. Uh, but eh, yeah, it seems okay. Otherwise, not so great. Mind Whisker, uncommon rat wizard, three mana four, a three, two. Being for upkeep, surveil one. Threshold, as long as seven or more cards are in your graveyard. Creatures of your opponent's control get plus minus up, minus up. That is a very powerful effect, folks. The minus up, minus up to your creature, opponent's creatures is very, very powerful. That being said, the body here isn't great. Uh, but this is a solid, limited, uncommon. You know, helps fill the graveyard for other threshold stuff, too. Uh, just fine. Fine, limited, uncommon. Mockingbird. Cool card. Blue X. Bird, bard. 1-1 one, one flyer. You may have Mockingbird enter as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, mana value less than or equal to the amount of mana spent on Mockingbird. Except it's a bird. This is other types and has flying. This card seems really, really good. Uh, so, I actually misread it the first time uh, where I was thinking about the, the X was the, the mana value of the creature. It's actually not that. It's just the total cost. So you can play this on turn one and copy their Ragavan or whatever as a, a one mana play, which is pretty sweet. So this card's actually really, really good. Uh, maybe uh, you know we'll put an asterisk on, on possible best in show here. Uh, but this card's very, very powerful. You know the ability to copy things is great. A one one flying bird for one as a floor is fine. You're playing that counter spell, whatever your deck and so on and so forth could be reasonable too. Uh, but yeah, being able to copy your opponent's cheap creatures uh, is awesome. Giving them flying is also awesome. Card's great. Uh, phenomenal limited card. And then also, I think, uh, a very, very solid constructed card and uh, very, very efficient as far as what you're copying, which is good, too. The only downside is you can't easily copy, like, their Atraxa or whatever. Uh, but as far as, like, a nuts and bolts kind of card, this card's sweet. Great limited card, cool constructed card. Uh, also cool on tokens, that is true. There are tokens that have no uh, have mana value. They make a 4-4 Rhino token. Boom, I got a 4-4 Flyer now, too. So, cool. Good stuff. Like it a lot. Night Whirl Hermit, another rat rogue. They made it for a 1 4 with vigilance. Threshold, plus the muscle can't be blocked. Uh, total filler, limited card. Uh, even at threshold, this card is even that exciting. And threshold is not an easy thing to accomplish, too. So, yeah, not a huge fan. Uh, just a very, very mediocre, mediocre card. Otterball Antics, they made it for a sorcery. Make a 1 1 blue and red otter token with prowess. If this spell was cast from anywhere other than your hand. Put a plus-plus encounter on that creature. And it has flashback. So, blue-red's all about otters. A lot of prowess stuff happening. 1-1 uh, one, one prowess for two is not the most exciting. Uh, but being able to flashback and do it again is pretty sweet. It is kind of nice that if you're doing prowess stuff, this is a prowess threat that also is a trigger for your prowess cards, too. Feels a little weak, though. 
honestly. Um, he does have a little ball. That is, he's very happy. But yeah, overall, I think kind of an eh, 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 eh uh, kind of card. Hex reset, thanks so much. Pearl of Wisdom. Divination. Cost of one less to be controlled. An otter, uh, draw two. So if you have an otter, draw two for two. Otherwise, draw two for three. The problem with this card is there just aren't that many otters. Cursory glance of the common otters. I missed that. There's like three. So like, it's going to be hard to figure out, you know, like how often you're going to cast this for two. When you cast it for two, I thought it was great. But I, I just don't know if there's enough otters to make this card fu uh, functional, you know, uh, which is a major, major concern. That being said, casting it for three and limited isn't the end of the world, uh, but it's not good, you know. So uh, overall, I think this is mostly going to be filler and archetype kind of thing. With playing control deck, you want a two for one, sure, but overall, I think this card's less exciting than it looks. Plume Creed Escort. It's meant for a 2-1 Flying Flash. Great stats. Whatever ADBs. You have a creature Hexproof in one of turn. Uh, this is just a good magic card. It's not much more to say. Good, simple effect. You know, again, I really appreciate the simplicity of this set. You know, this is very similar to Rattle Chains, uh, but just not for spirits, for anything. So, body's great. Effect is great. Really, really good limited card. Possible of attractive card also, I think. Uh, card's great. The Portent of Calamity. Blue Axe Sorcery. Reveal top X cards of your library. For each card type, you may exile a card of that type from among them. Put the rest in your graveyard. You may cast a spell from among the exiled cards without paying its mana cost. If you exiled four or more cards this way, then put the rest of the exiled cards into your hand. All right. Forget everything I said about... about uh, <laughs> About simplicity. Um, all right. So, sort of like a mind spring effect. Uh, blue X, draw X, but you will only draw unique card types. And then if you cast it for five mana or more, and you were able to exile four different types. You can play one of the cards for free. That is a lot of a lot of difficulty. Uh, you know, we're talking about X needs to be like probably five or six to even have a shot at hitting four different types. Uh, otherwise, it's just kind of a weird card draw spell. Um, ceilings high, floors low. You know, what if you reveal four lengths? You just brick like a freaking well, you're building a house. You know, so I think this card's pretty bad. Definitely a really weird card. A fine limited card. You should put some mana into it. Trust some cards. I think it's fine. But really, really weird card. Uh, very strange. Yeah. Run away together. Aww. Otter and the frog are sitting in a tree. What? Bingo. All right. Bomb and common, folks. Two mana for an instant. Bounce your creature and their creature. This sort of peel from reality effect is also... is usually quite good in limited. Uh, you bounce their thing, you save your creature, uh, you reuse an ETB, whatever else it might be. It's a way to mitigate the downside of bounce being uh, card disadvantage because they're usually getting some kind of uh, effect off it also. And then remember, context-wise, so many of the frogs have ETB effects. It wants you to replay your own stuff. So contextually among the frog cards, it makes a lot of sense. And then just like with ETB cards, you just bounce your ETB card, block with it, bounce another thing. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I think this card's pretty sweet. Um, is it... The the blue commons aren't very exciting. So I, I don't think this card's like insanely good or anything, but it felt like the best of the blue commons. Cool art. Cool card. We'll see. Season of Weaving. There's one season for each color. These are all paw print cards. They are big sorcerers that are mythics. Choose up to five paw prints worth of modes. You may change, choose the same mode more than once. So, draw five cards for four mana sorcery. Mm, it's okay. Copy an artifact creature you control or return each non-land, non-token permanent to its owner's hand. So, uh, kind of a weird card, right? So, draw five, sure. Uh, you can bounce all the non-land stuff. It's like a pseudo for the Wrath, but not really because you're just bouncing stuff. It also doesn't bounce tokens. If you play against token deck, you can just lose anyway. Copying your own things is kind of cool, but requires a lot of hoops. 
I think this card's mostly a bust. Uh, I think there's way too many, like, caveats and things that have to go right to make this card good. Great limited card. Totally fine. Uh, you know, I guess copying your own thing twice is kind of cool. If I have, like, a decent creature to play, make two copies of it, draw a card, it's kind of cool, too. But it just, like, needs a lot of things to go right. And for a six-mana sorcery, it's not where you want to be, usually. So, constructed-wise, I don't really think so. Limited, certainly a fine card, but underwhelming overall. Sure up. Big reprint. One blue instant. Creature control gets plus one hexproof on a turn and untap it. Uh, this card's very good. Uh, we saw Snake Skin Veil be awesome in OTJ. To be fair, that was a very removal heavy uh, for, uh, set, but Pump Spell, that's also a protection spell, is great. Untapping, it's cute too. It's cheap. Triggers Prowess. Triggers the uh, Battal uh, Battalion. Uh, Valiant Effects. Uh, just a good card. Not a card you can take super highly because like you can't play four of them, uh, but definitely a good card nonetheless. Shoreline Looter, two minutes for a 1-1, one, one, unblockable. Uh, it, when it hits your opponent, it loots. If you have Threshold, you draw a card. The way it's written is very confusing. But uh, good limited card for sure. You know, it just kind of goes in play. It loots while doing some damage. And then later in the game, draws cards, which is cool. Also cool when it's self-perpetuating because you are discarding cards to fill Threshold. And then it turns itself on, which is nice. Constructed it probably isn't good enough. Uh, you know, a 1-1 one, one unblockable for 1 is just probably not really there. This card had been sick in, in Constructed like 15 years ago. Uh, but these days, not very exciting. Could maybe see play. Uh, but overall, more of a good limited card. Skyskipper duo. We got a bird and a frog. 5 mana for a 3-3 flying. ETB, uh, blink, a thing you control. Bring it back in the end step. So again, 3-3 flyer for 5 isn't the most exciting. But contextually, uh, a lot of the frog cards care about blinking and reusing ETBs. This card could be pretty reasonable. That being said, I think this is probably a little too weak, more of a filler level card. If it was a 3-4, I'd be a little more interested, but 3-3 uh, flyer for 5 is just like kind of like mopey these days. Spellgeier, 4 minutes for an instant. Choose one, Counterspell, or Surveil 2, Draw 2. Kind of cool to see like the, the Glimmer of Genius effect on a card that's also a Counterspell. This is like the, the whole fix by itself, right? When a control deck says go 4 mana up, do they have a Counterspell or a card draw spell? What about both? Right? Pokos Los Dos. So, I think this card's going to outshine Shot and Constructed uh, because the memory damage is gone. So, your control decks need some way to draw cards. Just because it, it does it decently well. Uh, but it is a pretty, you know, pretty low rate card overall. And Constructed wise, I mean, limited wise, both effects are pretty clunky. So, I think it was exciting. Splash Lasher. 4 mana for a 3 3. Frog Wizard with Offspring 2. That means you can spend a kicker cost of 2. And get a copy of this creature that's a 1-1 one, one with all of the abilities. When it EDBs, tap into one creature and stun it. And then, of course, you can uh, offspring it and stun two things. This card's a limited banger. All right. Uh, Berg Strider, is that you? Uh, awesome, awesome card. Stunning, tapping and stunning things limited is great. Being able to do it twice is even greater. Uh, awesome limited card. Can't wait to play with it. Super stoked. Splash Portal. One blue, instant, I'm sorry, sorcery. Exile creature you control, then return it. If a creature is a bird, frog, otter, or rat, draw a card. Uh, if you're drawing a card, this card's great, right? We're using the ETB and then draw cards. Very nice. It's cheap. Uh, as a sorcery, obviously, it's a little clunky. Uh, but if your deck is full of birds, frogs, otters, or rats, and you have ETB effects, this card seems excellent. Honestly, really, really good. Storm Chaser's Talent. One blue, class. This is a rare when an ETB is making Otter token prowess. So, right off the bat, that's awesome, right? One mana for a 1-1 one, one prowess is, it's not playable by itself, but that is a, a very, very solid baseline to start on. Spend four mana for level two, and when it when it makes level two, you return instant source card right to your hand, and spend six mana for uh, level three, and you cast instant sorcerer spell, make it Otter token prowess. So, the level up effects are really expensive. But having a mana stack isn't too bad, and the front side is reasonable enough. It's also important to note that this is a creature, like a prowess creature, that's also a non creature spell. Because the problem is, when you play a prowess deck, you have to have a good mix of lands, prowess creatures, and spells to trigger them. So anything that can, that can double up on being a prowess creature and also a spell to trigger things is pretty cool. So. I think it's pretty nice. I definitely think that the uh, it's a little clunky as far as the higher effects, but the, the baseline, what you're getting, is pretty solid. Uh, card's good. If it's a prowess deck, it's in standard. This card will see playing it for sure. 
Sugarcoat. The salted pork is particularly good. Too bad for an enchantment aura, enchanted creature, or food. Enchanted permanent is a colorless food artifact. Lose all abilities at all card types. This is basically just a uh, you know a blue removal spell. Three mana, kill a kill a creature, make it a food. That's obviously food for limited. You know, for constructed, you probably have better ways to kill things. I guess if you're playing mono blue, you're desperate to kill shielder, sure, this can do that. Uh, but yeah, good limited removal spell. Nothing more. Note here, it, it has enchant food, it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't fall off. That's why. Thought Shucker. It's better for a 1 3 rat rogue common with threshold, 2 mana. Put a counter on and draw a card. Only if you have threshold. It's filler, but if you are like a really graveyard filling deck and you can activate this thing reliably, pretty good, honestly. But. No other deck besides that deck will want this. You can get this card almost for free in your drafts. Thunder Trap Trainer. Two meta for a 1 2 Otter Wizard Offspring 4. When this ETP is look at top four cards in your library, reveal a non creature on land and put it in your hand. Rest go at the bottom. So, very similar to Augur Abolus, right? It gets to see one extra card, but it has one less toughness. One less toughness is a huge downside. Uh, a 1 2 body is almost irrelevant, whereas a 1 3 body can at least block some things. That's a major downside. Being able to see an extra card is nice, and being able to offspring this and make two copies and draw two cards for six mana is also pretty cool too. But I think the body is just too bad on this card. I think you're just not getting enough for the body to try and play a card draw spell. Note that it is cute with the Restoration Angel, but I think that card's pretty bad too. So, I think this card is, it's alright. You know, in limited, it's great. It's card advantage if you're playing up spells in your deck. But, just not good enough. And if it had a prowess, it was a 1-1. One, one. If it was a 1-3, it just needs a little more oomph. And it's not really there. Valley Floodcaller. It's a freaking surfing otter. Do better for a 2-2 two -two flash otter wizard. You may cast non-creature spells that they have flash. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, pumps all your birds, frogs, otters, and rats, and then untaps them. Obviously a pretty powerful effect, but kind of weird, where, you know, you when you're playing a prowess deck, you're not typically going that wide, and the more wide you're going, the more creatures you're playing, and the more creatures you're playing, the less your prowess effects are good. So, it's sort of like a, uh, a lot of tension here, and also a 3-mana 2-2 is also pretty rough too. That being said, being able to flash it and steps kind of cool, but I think for the most part, this card's a dud and constructed, although it's very, very good and limited for sure. Water Spout Warden. The metaphor, a 3-2 Frog Soldier. Whenever it attacks, if another creature ETB has flying, this card's fine. There's limited filler, 3-drop. Reasonable. Wishing Well. For the metaphor, an artifact. Tap, put a coin counter on Wishing Well. When you do, you may cast target instant or sorcery card mana belt. You can have coin counters on Wishing Well. From your graveyard, without paying its mana cost, if that spell put in your graveyard, exile it instead, activate only as a sorcery. Very, very slow. It is somewhat powerful. Uh, the fact that you can play a spell immediately is kind of cool. So I cast the thing, I tap it, exile cut down, cast cut down, say go. Not a bad sequence, uh, but I think this card is going to be mostly rely on how many good one mana spells there are uh, and kind of go from there. Uh, it's... Slow, it's somewhat powerful, but I think it's kind of clunky overall. So, uh, constructed, probably not. Maybe like a sideboard card for like super grindy games or whatever. Uh, but, but yeah, kind of awkward. Must also be the exact mana value too. So it has the Aether Vial effect of like maybe it won't even work. It doesn't work with counter spells either. Yeah, I don't know. Kind of a cool card, but pretty clunky overall. That's it for blue. So, we got Otter Ball Elite as our best in show. Downport Mage is our sleeper card. Long River's Pull is our trap card. And Runaway Together is our Bombin' Common. Blue's all done. Black's coming up. You two folks love you. Like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget. 10 New Brews is coming Wednesday of 24th. And then Bronze Mythic will be on the 30th on the release day for the set. All right. Black's coming up. You two folks love you. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.